Hello everyone, this is BB Sangmay and today I am going to discuss a problem of design of quarter joint. Okay, do subscribe for the upcoming videos of machine design. So here we have the numerical. It is required to design a quarter joint to connect two steel rods of equal diameter. Each rod is subjected to an axial tensile force of 50 kN. Design the quarter joint and specify its main dimensions. The permissible stresses for rods, spigot end and socket end are as follows. So sigma t that is permissible stress and tension is 66.67 Newton per mm square. Sigma ck that is permissible crushing stress it is 133.33 Newton per mm square. Tau permissible stress and shear. 33.33 newton per mm square so these are the stresses uh, permissible stresses for rods spigot end and socket end okay and the permissible stresses for the quarter the permissible stress in tension sigma t is 100 newton per mm square and permissible stress in shear is 50 newton per mm square okay so uh, this is the given uh, the load is given applied force axial tensile force of magnitude 50,000 Newton is applied on the quarter joint. Okay, so uh, let us uh, go for the design So first we are going to calculate the diameter of rod as the rods are subjected to axial tensile force Okay, so here in this figure you can see that this is the socket. This is the spigot and this is the quarter We are going to uh, find out the dimensions of the uh, all of these so uh, first of all i'm going to calculate the diameter of rod um, which is connected to socket and spigot end okay so in the figure here you can see that uh, i'm going to calculate the diameter of rod socket rod of socket a and socket uh, rod a and rod b of socket and spigot so i'm going to calculate the dimension d okay so here i'm going to consider the rod is going to fail in tension so the induced tensile stress will be equals to sigma t will be equals to p divided by a okay so here the cross sectional area of the rod is uh, pi by 4 d square okay so the formula will be sigma t is equals to uh, 4 p divided by pi d square and i have uh, re write the same formula in terms of diameter d is equals to root of 4 p divided by pi into sigma t so here by using this formula we can calculate the diameter of rod okay so we have the value of p which is 50000 newton we have the value of sigma t again uh, we are here we are uh, designing the rod okay and the permissible stresses for the rods that is the permissible stress and tension for the rod is 66.67 okay so let us put the value of sigma t in this equation let us put the value of p and calculate the diameter okay so after calculation i found that diameter is 30.90 mm okay i have uh, rounded it to the 32 mm next digit okay so this is the diameter of a rod okay so finally uh, we have calculated the diameter of rod next thing is uh, some dimensions of uh, quarter are depend on the diameter of rod as per the empirical relation we can calculate the thickness of quarter that is t in the side view here you can see that the quarter is having uh, thickness uh, t and thickness of quarter is in uh, there is a relation between thickness of quarter and diameter of rod so thickness of quarter is 0.31 times diameter of rod so as per the calculation i found that the thickness of quarter is 10 mm okay so uh, now we have calculated the diameter of rod and the thickness of quarter next is let us calculate the diameter d2 of spigot here you can see that uh, the spigot is the part which fits inside the socket okay by and it, it do, these two parts are connected by means of a quarter so the uh, sp uh, diameter of spigot is d2 here you can see that and this in this figure you, you can observe that how the spigot exactly looks okay so here you can see that the, after the application of four tensile force there is one uh, there is a possibility of failure of spigot in tension also at the section xx okay so at the section xx this is how the exactly spigot looks okay so let us uh, see uh, the induced uh, tensile stress at section xs it means that at this point where the uh, quarter will be there okay so at this section uh, the spigot exactly looks like this and uh, 
uh, I'm going to uh, calculate the induced tensile stress at this section. It will be sigma T is equals to again P by A. So we need to calculate the area of cross section uh, which will be subjected to tensile stress. So the, here you can see that the area of cross section will be A will be equals to uh, it will be equals to pi by 4 D2 square. Okay, minus uh, we need to uh, we need to minus this area 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 of this slot inside which there will be a quarter okay so we need to uh, deduct this area from the total area and the total area is pi by 4 d2 square so the area will be pi by 4 d2 square minus d2 into t okay so here you can see that it will be pi by 4 d2 square minus d2 into t so next is uh, let us put the value of area in this equation and by using this formula we can calculate d2 because already we have calculated the thickness we have the value of p we have the value of sigma t so i have written the equation in terms of p is equals to pi by 4 d2 square minus d2 t into sigma t okay so here uh, let us put the value of p p is 50000 uh, we are going to calculate d2 thickness is 10 and sigma t is the for the material of spigot it is 66.67 which is the permissible uh, stress in tension so after calculation i found that uh, the, here you can see that there is one quadratic equation and we need to solve this quadratic equation by using the equation of uh, here uh, our intention is to calculate d2 so the equation will be d2 is equals to minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4ac okay so here uh, a is the coefficient of d2 square b is the coefficient of d2 and c is uh, this 950 minus 954.88 so put the value uh, all these values and solve the quadratic equation so d2 will be equals to minus uh, b so here the value of b is actually minus 12.73 so it will be plus 12.73 plus minus root of b square okay again the value of b is minus 12.73 uh, square of that minus 4ac again the value of a is the coefficient of d2 square is 1 so it will be 4 into bracket 1 into 954.88 here value of c is minus 954.88 okay so after simplification i found that the value of d2 is 37.91 or we can take it as a 40 mm okay so finally we found the uh, diameter of spigot d2 next is let us calculate the outer diameter of socket okay so here, here you can see that the spigot is having outer diameter d2 which is the inner diameter of socket also and we are going to calculate the outer diameter of socket so he this is how the socket looks this is the cross-sectional view so we are going to calculate the outer diameter of socket that is uh, d1 okay so i am going to consider the again tensile failure of socket at this section yy so here let us consider the tensile failure of socket at section yy so after the application of force p there will be a tensile stress of magnitude sigma t is equals to p by a okay if p is the applied force and a is the cross-sectional area we need to calculate the cross-sectional area at the section yy so here you can see that the cross-sectional area will be pi by 4 d1 square um, minus pi by 4 d2 square minus we need to uh, deduct the thickness here you can see that this is how the exactly cross-sectional area looks which is subjected to axial tensile force okay so we need to uh, deduct the area uh, area of a slot inside which there will be a quarter okay so this area will be we need to consider the thickness of quarter uh, and again uh, the outer diameter and the uh, inner diameter d2 okay so the formula will be uh, pi by 4 d1 square minus d2 square okay minus uh, d1 minus d2 into t okay so area will be pi by 4 into bracket d1 square minus d2 square minus d1 minus d2 into t okay so let us put the uh, value of area in this equation sigma t will be equals to p divided by pi by 4 d1 square minus d2 square minus d1 minus d2 into t okay so we are going to calculate uh, the here our intention is to calculate d1 that is outer diameter of socket okay we have already calculated d2 in the previous slide i have discussed that is the inside diameter of socket and d2 is also the outside diameter of spigot okay so here uh, we have the value of t we have the value of sigma t 
we have the value of p okay I, and uh, we are going to calculate the d2 okay so let us put all the values uh, the equation uh, will be in the in terms of p will be uh, here you can see that p is equals to uh, pi by 4 d1 square minus d2 square minus d1 minus d2 into t into sigma t so let us put all the values so here p is 50,000 okay uh, d1 which we are going to calculate d2 already we have calculated it is 40 okay uh, thickness is 10 mm we have uh, calculated the thickness of the quarter okay and sigma t it is the permissible stress for the permissible tensile stress for the spigot already uh, in the first slide you can see the uh, it is given in the problem so after the calculation i found that there, uh, one more time and there will be a quadratic equation we need to solve okay so here coefficient of d1 that is a it is 1 uh, here d1 square is 1 uh, coefficient of d1 is minus 12.73 and coefficient of uh, actually c not coefficient uh, the value of c is minus 2045.59 okay so let us put all the values uh, in terms of uh, we are going to calculate d1 okay the value formula will be d1 equals to minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4ac upon 2a okay so here d1 is equals to minus b the coefficient of b uh, d1 is uh, minus 12.73 so it will be minus uh, minus minus plus okay 12.73 plus minus root of b square again the value of b is minus 12.73 okay the square of minus will be plus minus 4 into a the coefficient of d1 square is 1 so i have not considered here 1 into 4 into ac the coefficient uh, actually the value of c is minus 2045 so here and divided by 2a again 2 into 1 okay so after simplification i found d1 is uh, 52.04 or it is equals to 55 we can take it as a 55 okay so finally we have calculated the outer diameter of spigot okay the next thing is uh, there are few dimensions related with spigot and quarter so the diameter of spigot color and socket color so here you can see that uh, the spigot color is uh, represented by d3 and socket color is represented by d4 so spigot color d3 is equals to 1.5 d uh, where d is the diameter of rods that already we have calculated so d3 will be equals to 48 mm as per the empirical relation and d4 that is the diameter of socket color it is 2.4 times the diameter of rod and it, it is 76.8 uh, or we can take it as 80 mm okay the next is uh, the dimensions a and c so here you can see that uh, a is the portion uh, to the left side uh, portion of the socket to the uh, sorry spigot to the left side of quarter and c is the portion of the socket to the right side of the quarter okay so the dimension a and c will be equals to 0.75 times the diameter of rod diameter of rod already calculated is 32 mm so a, a, a and c will be equals to 24 mm as per the empirical relation next is uh, we are going to calculate the width of quarter that is average width which is b okay so we can calculate the width of quarter by considering the shear failure and by considering the bending failure so first of all we are going to calculate the width of quarter by considering the shear failure so here you can see that the, after the application of force p on the rod a and rod b there is a possibility of a failure of quarter in shear okay along this plane there is a possibility of failure of quarter in shear along this and this plane okay so which already i have shown here so the shear stress will be actually induced over the area it will be tangent to area okay it will not be normal to area like a normal uh, tensile stress okay so here we are going to calculate we are going to consider this area of uh, area at this cross section and here uh, for the quarter we can see that there is a taper provided okay so we are going to consider the average uh, width that is the thickness of quarter which is represented by the letter b okay and the thickness uh, of quarter is actually t okay so b into t will be the area but uh, here you can see that there is a double shear so i am going to consider the area uh, 2 into area so the uh, induced shear stress will be equals to uh, tau is equals to p by a and area will be uh, 2 bt 
because double shear is there so the formula will be tau is equals to p divided by 2 bt we can use this uh, formula to calculate the uh, width of the quarter yeah average width of the quarter which is represented by b okay t is the thickness which is already we have calculated p is the applied force and tau is the permissible stress in shear okay so already we have the value of tau we have the value of p we have the value of t let us calculate uh, b i have written the equation in terms of b b is equals to p divided by 2 into tau into t so let us put the values of p tau and t in the equation it will be equals to b is equals to 50,000 divided by 2 into 50 50 is the permissible uh, shear stress for the quarter material of the quarter uh, t is the thickness of quarter which is 10 m which is already we have calculated so uh, by simplification i found that b is equals to 50 mm okay so in the similar manner uh, we can calculate the dimension or uh, sorry width of quarter uh, by considering the bending filler and we are going to select the maximum um, we are going to calculate the uh, width of quarter in bending and already we have calculated the width of, width of quarter in shear so uh, we are going to consider uh, consider the maximum among, uh, one among these two okay next is uh, let us calculate the width of quarter in bending okay so here uh, already in the design procedure i have explained uh, how the bending moment is calculated okay in the portion which which is actually contained inside the spigot uh, on that portion on that uh, width d2 there will be a uniformly distributed load and the portion which is contained inside the socket there will be a uniformly varying load okay so for this we have calculated already the bending moment we have derived the formula in the design procedure sigma b is equals to p by 2 uh, multiplied by d2 by 4 uh, plus d4 minus d2 by 6 multiplied by b by 2 divided by tb cube divided by 12 okay so here p is the applied force d2 is the uh, actually it is the external diameter of spigot d4 is the external diameter of socket already we have calculated d2 d4 okay b uh, is the width of the uh, quarter and b is the dimension which we are going to calculate T is the thickness already we have calculated thickness of the quarter B is the again width of quarter average width of quarter that we are going to calculate okay so uh, let us uh, simplify this uh, so I have converted written this equation in terms of B it will be root of 3 P divided by T into Sigma B uh, multiplied by D4 by 2 plus D4 minus D2 by 6 okay so let us put the value of P T Sigma B D2 D4 okay and calculate the width so uh, i have uh, put the value of uh, applied force which is 50000 sigma b is the permissible stress in bending for the material of quarter if it is not given in the problem then we need to consider the permissible stress in tension for the material of quarter okay uh, d2 is the di uh, ex uh, diameter of spigot which is 40 mm as per the calculation d4 is the diameter of socket outer diameter of socket which is 80 mm okay so after the calculation i found that b is 50 mm so uh, in the previous slide i have uh, calculated the dimension b by using by considering the shear failure and in this slide i have calculated the same dimension by considering bending filler and in the both the calculations i found that the value of b is exactly same 50 mm okay so i am going to take it as it is if uh, uh, in case the values will be different we have to go for the maximum huh? we have to select the maximum value of b among the uh, bending filler and among the uh, bending filler and shear filler okay next is the uh, uh, for whatever calculated dimensions we are going to check uh, whether the spigot and socket are safe in crushing and shear or not so let us check uh, for the crushing stress in spigot end okay so here in this figure you can see that after the application of force there is a possibility of crushing failure of spigot okay so this portion of the spigot can get crushed because of the quarter okay so we are going to calculate the crushing stress so induced crushing stress will be sigma ck is equals to p by a we are we have to calculate the area under crushing area under crushing will be uh, the maximum area will be uh, here you can see that the crushing uh, will take place i will show you this is the end part of the socket sorry spigot and this area can get crushed okay so i'm going to consider the uh, this uh, diameter of the spigot which is d2 and i am going to consider the thickness among uh, 
about which the crushing will be there and thickness is t thickness of the quarter okay so the area will be b into t okay uh, sorry t into d2 okay so sigma ck will be equals to p divided by t into d2 already we have calculated the thickness we have calculated the d2 that is the diameter of spigot so well, let us calculate sigma ck so as per the calculation i found that sigma ck is 125 newton per mm square okay next is uh, uh, already we have the value of sigma ck that is the permissible crushing stress this is the induced crushing stress uh, remember that this is the induced crushing stress for the dimensions of td2 uh, that we have calculated and uh, in the problem uh, they have provided the value of crushing stress for the material of uh, spigot and it is uh, permissible crushing stress is 133.33 newton per mm square okay so the induced crushing stress is this is the induced and this is the permissible so the induced crushing stress is less than the permissible one so our design is safe if the induced crushing stress sigma ck is going to exceed the permissible one then uh, we have to go for the redesign because uh, in that case design will not be safe next is the let us check for the shear stress in this pigot end okay so the same suppose pigot end here you can see that there is a possibility of failure of uh, shear and the portion of end of spigot can get tear up because of the action of the application of the force and the reverse action of the quarter okay so this portion can can move towards the left side okay so i am going to calculate the induced shear stress so the formula will be induced shear stress tau is equals to p by a and here you can see that uh, uh, because of the application of force there is a double shear failure here and the area of single uh, shear is actually it is uh, a into d2 okay so this is the area under shear okay so this is the dimension a which will get tear off this is the dimension a and this is the dimension d2 which is the diameter of the spigot okay so the area will be because of double shear i am going to multiply the area by 2 okay so tau is equals to p divided by 2 into a d2 okay so now we have the value of a d2 p let us put the all the values of a d2 d and p we can calculate the induced shear stress so after the simplification uh, i found that induced shear stress 26.04 newton per mm square for the dimensions of spigot for the uh, end width of 24 mm and the diameter 40 mm the induced shear stress is 26.04 newton per mm square okay next is uh, uh, already in the problem they have provided the uh, permissible shear stress for the material of spigot and the permissible shear stress permissible or allowable shear stress for the material of spigot is 33.33 newton per mm square so this is the permissible one and this is the induced one again the induced one is less than the permissible one so our design is safe if the induced uh, the shear stress uh, will uh, is going to exceed the permissible one then our design will not be safe next check for the crushing stresses in socket end okay so here uh, you can see that after the application of force p uh, the end part of socket uh, that means uh, this portion this portion and this portion of socket can get uh, can fail in crushing because of the after the application of force uh, p here you can see that the force of magnitude p will be applied okay uh, in this direction in the both direction in a tensile manner okay after the application of force p uh, the quarter is going to exert a same intensity of force so in this upper half it is going to exert a force of magnitude of p by 2 similarly in the lower half of the it is going to exert this force of magnitude of p by 2 okay so this area can get crushed okay so let us uh, see uh, so the crushing stress sigma ck will be equals to p by a again the area under crushing here you can see that this is the area under crushing okay so this is the portion inside and uh, this is the slot inside which the quarter will be there this is the top view you can see that and uh, this is the thickness of the quarter um, th that, that much amount of area will be crushed so it is t okay and uh, we are going to uh, calculate the area by considering d4 minus d2 so the area will be d4 uh, into t minus d2 into t so sigma ck is equals to uh, t into bracket d4 by uh, sigma ck is equals to p divided by t into bracket d4 minus d2 and we have the value of t we have the value of d4 and d2 and p 
let us calculate the induced crushing stress at the end of the socket so it is uh, as per the calculation well the value of p is 50000 uh, which is given in the problem t is the thickness which is 10 mm which we have calculated d4 is the outer diameter of the socket okay here you can see that and d2 is the inner diameter which is 40 mm so after the simplification i found that is 125 newton per mm square so this is the induced crushing stress for the dimensions of socket and the permissible one which is given in the problem for the material of socket it is 133.33 again the induced crushing stress is less than the permissible one so whatever the empirical relations we have considered whatever the dimensions we have calculated that are correct for those dimensions uh, our design is safe okay next is check for shear stress in the socket end okay the same socket end can get tear off after the application of force of magnitude p okay so here you can see that uh, the, after the magnitude uh, application of force there is a possibility of double shear failure the end part the end portion can tear off okay so here you can see that uh, there will be a, a tensile stress along this and along this plane okay sorry shear stress not tensile stress okay after the application of force so let us calculate the induced shear stress it will be tau is equal to p by a uh, and here we are uh, we are going to calculate the area under shear okay so here you can see that that this portion of this is the area under shear actually this portion can get tear off so area under shear will be again the we need to consider the thickness of the cutter because of there will be a double shear failure okay so this area will be d2 d4 minus d2 multiplied by c again because of double shear failure because shear uh, takes place in two planes uh, i'm going to multiply the area by two so the area will be two into d4 minus d2 into c so p is equals to two into d4 minus d2 into c so let us put the value of p d4 d2 in and c in this equation and calculate the induced uh, shear stress uh, it is uh, as per the simplification it is 26.04 newton per mm square so this is the induced shear stress for the uh, selected dimensions of for the calculated dimensions of spigot uh, d4 d2 and c okay so the uh, let us check uh, the permissible one the permissible or allowable stress in shear it is given in the problem okay for the material of uh, spigot sorry socket it is uh, uh, tau is 33.33 newton per mm square so this is the permissible or all over one and this one is the induced so here you can see that again the induced stress is less than the permissible or allowable shear stress so our design is safe okay so uh, our stresses which are induced in the socket and spigot uh, ends are within limits so our design is safe okay next is uh, the thickness of spigot color and uh, here you can see that thickness of spigot color is t1 which is 0.45 d okay so uh, as per the empirical relation it is 15 mm 14.4 or we can consider it as 15 mm okay and the trip again the taper will be 1 in 32 okay taper of the quarter will be 1 in 32 okay that's it thank you